Do you want to make your baby's playtime more fun and exciting for both of you? By the end of this video, you'll have 15 more play ideas to spice up your playtime with your baby. Remember, every baby is unique and develops at their pace. So feel free to introduce these games a bit earlier, around 9 to 12 months or later. Use an everyday object like a banana or a toy phone or just mimic a phone call gesture. Pretend to talk on the phone in front of your baby. You can call your baby and start a quick conversation as your baby listens. Or you can call someone else and then pass over the phone to your baby and encourage your little one to talk on the phone too. Doing this allows your baby to imitate you and learn communication skills. Find a cardboard box. Tape over any gaps or corners that light may come through. Draw different shapes on three sides of the box and cut out the shapes. Then use the flashlight on your phone to project the shapes onto the wall and or floor. Cover the shapes with various colored cellophane paper for extra fun. Get a paper cup, snip off the bottom and put clear tape over it. Let your creativity flow and use a marker to draw anything you'd love for your little one to learn and discover. For this game, engage your baby in exploring your home by guiding your baby to flip light switches on and off in different rooms, turn the sink faucet on and off, or open and close drawers. You can talk about what you're doing as you're doing it. Narrating your actions to your baby helps them learn new words such as on, off, or open and close. By 11 months old, many babies can understand and respond to simple commands. This game helps them learn to respond to basic requests like pass me the toy. Use easy and consistent language when you're giving commands to your baby. Show your baby how proud you are by cheering your baby on with lots of positive reinforcement. When Elle turned 11 months, I began teaching her to fill containers. I used two baskets, one empty and one filled with toys, and showed her how to transfer the toys back and forth. While doing this, I used the Chinese words qu and fang to link actions with words. The idea is to connect experiences with keywords, like in and out in English. Good job, baby Elle. As soon as your little one shows interest in filling up containers, you can transform a shoebox to keep your baby engaged and keep practicing this new skill. Once your baby starts filling containers, why not create a fun DIY object permanence box? It's as simple as transforming a used cardboard box and making a ramp. Your kiddo will have a blast putting balls in and pulling them out. Buy six large packs of toilet paper.
tape the bottom four packs together to form a sturdy base. Then tape two more packs vertically with the base to create little stairs. I used extra wide corner protectors to tape over the surface to make climbing easier and safer for my daughter. A few moments later. If you're worried about your baby nibbling on small pompons, you can choose bigger ones. You can repurpose a used container like a Greek yogurt or a sour cream tub. Just make a hole in the lid that's slightly smaller than your pom pom. Start small. You can always make it bigger if your baby finds it difficult to push the pom pom through. Around eight to twelve months, your baby may become fascinated with holes. This is a natural part of their exploration of the world and their growing understanding of objects and their properties. I believe activities don't have to take ages to prepare, but if you're in a mood to go the extra mile, why not jazz up the game with a cute pom pom push cupcake? Provide your baby with kitchen objects. For example, I give Elle our stainless steel mixing bowls and wooden spoons. Demonstrate how to drum on these items. Arrange the pots, pans, cups, bowls, spoons, and other noise makers for your baby to explore. This game allows your baby to discover how different materials produce varied sounds. Encourage your baby to create music by pounding or drumming on these items. Try stacking activities with objects around the house. For this game, I sat down with my daughter on the play mat and had three mixing bowls in front of her. I named each bowl by its size, small, medium, and big, and modeled to her how to nest them from small to big a few times. And then let her take a turn. Cut the middle section of a water bottle to create a DIY clear tube. Apply tape to the edge to ensure it's safe for your baby's hand. Show your baby how a ball goes into and exits the tube. Encourage your baby to pick up the ball and repeat the process. Attach the clear tube to the wall. Have your baby while sitting or standing. If your baby can pull up to stand, reach and drop the ball through the tube. Create a DIY family portrait puzzle using cardboard from any box. Although I created three circles, you can totally start with one circle and gradually increase the complexity as your baby gets more comfortable with the activity. For an older toddler, you can play around with the size of the circles. For example, arrange them from small to medium to large, or use different shapes for the photos. You will need wider cardboard for these variations, of course, but really the possibilities are endless, and it's all part of the fun. Try pointing to an object in a house, like a fruit, and say, "This is an apple." Pointing draws your baby's attention toward a whole object and shows them how pointing shares information. If your baby has started pointing, 
Look where your baby points and name what you this see. For example, my daughter points at the flower this and I say, is This is a flower. Yeah. Your baby will love sharing the moment with you and learning new words for the things they are interested in. The last game is a mess free foil painting. I love it because it's an open ended art activity that allows my baby to explore colors and the movement of paint. Your baby will love seeing how the paint moves, merges, and mixes too. It's a great sensory experience and introduction to the world of colors. Start by wrapping a piece of aluminum foil around a thin cutting board. This step helps keep the base of the painting more sturdy. Apply dots of paint over the foil. I also mixed in some shaving cream because the type of paint I found isn't super spreadable. I hope that Elle can see a more dramatic effect. The magic part is to put everything inside a self-seal cellophane bag. Now, let your child press and smudge the paint colors. Different babies focus on mastering different skills first. So don't worry if your child doesn't get something right the first time. The goal is to have a ball and help your baby learn through the process. Repetition and patience are key. And most importantly, have fun. I hope you and your baby have a great time with any of these ideas and I'll catch you in the next video.